system of hiking and running trails across the globe forms the backbone of the UTMB World Series. Steeped in history, the trail is the thread that connects communities, brings us to spectacular landscapes, and is now the playground for riders, hikers, and especially us trail runners. Trails get us right to the heart of nature. They can be challenging, extremely remote, but they always provide a memorable adventure. Trails are the global arena of the sport of trail running. My name is Heather Jackson, and I grew up in New Hampshire to active parents. We spent a lot of time adventuring outdoors, and I got involved in team sports at an early age playing soccer and later ice hockey at a collegiate level. I found my way into triathlon, where I spent over a decade competing at the highest level. I am a recent recruit to the sport of trail running, and I'm in Auburn to compete in the Canyon's 50K endurance run. But first, I'm going to dip into some of the local culture and find out from the people who have made Auburn their home why it has been dubbed the endurance capital of the world. Welcome. Thank you so much. Great to meet you. Likewise. While claiming he's not technically a historian, Hal Hall has competed in 31 Tevis Cups, finished the Western States Endurance Race three times, and has ridden a horse across the U.S. from Missouri to California. He is a deep mine of local trail history. I got to spend time with him and his horses. You know, you think back to how the Tevis ride began in the mid-1950s. Uh, it was kind of on a bet where horses as enduring and, and tough as those from the U.S. Calvary, the Pony Express, you know, that sort of thing. And they proved that, you know, it was quite possible. Okay. But over the, probably the most rugged portion of the Sierra Nevada. So the idea that someone could possibly run a hundred miles was just unthinkable. However, the fellow that did in 1974 was a Tevis Cup rider. Okay, interesting. I was gonna ask, like, how did that even come about? Someone saying, you know what, I'm going to run it now. So he had ridden it. He'd ridden it. And now? He wasn't always that successful in his riding, okay. but what he was was athletic enough to help his horse by running. Uh, I remember him starting with us, um, that happened to be a year that I came in first and won the Tevis Cup. Oh my goodness. He came into the stadium looking pretty good. And in fact, just, you know, I think he had like 20 minutes to spare. I wanted to see Gordy finish. And he did somersaults before he crossed the finish oh line. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Easy peasy, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> well, here's a buckle I wanted to show you. Wow. It's a little unusual. Uh, 3,000 miles. Yes. It's, I thought it was 100 miles. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is, and everyone who finishes the Tevis Cup ride uh, earns a 100 mile one day buckle. Okay. But if you go 30 times, you get one of these. 30 times, yes. 30 Tevis Cups. 30 Tevis Cups, yes. <laughs> that now, is incredible. I mean, he has finished the Tevis Cup over 30 times. Yeah, an overall community member here who has seen 
you know, the trails through the decades, which to hear the history of it has been incredible. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. <laughs> Welcome to Auburn. Oh, thank you. Yeah, first time. So. Yeah, what do you think? Oh my God, I literally blown away. It's yeah. amazing. I cannot yeah. get over these trails. Cole Watson, elite trail runner, coach, fisherman, and previous winner of the Canyon's 50K endurance run, took me out for a great early morning run on part of the Canyon Race Trail. You ready to go? <laughs> yeah, All let's right, go. let's hit it. All right. I really got the inside scoop on tackling this race. Yeah, awful Annie's. Uh, this is, I mean, this is the post long run spot. I mean, if I could be a member here, I, I would be a card holding member for sure. That's awesome. It looks amazing. I, I don't even, yeah, know where to start. He shared so many little tidbits and also gave me full description on kind of elevation at the different parts, the key areas where we'll all hit and at what points in the race. I mean, the hardest parts are gonna be from the confluence to driver's flat. It's gonna be the most exposed, it's gonna be all net uphill. It's going to be where all the climbing in the race is found. Um, I think a lot will push it there, or well, I think that if people push it too hard, they might overcook just because it is the most exposed. You're gonna the train is the roughest, and you're gonna have to like be stabilizing a lot um, going up. Most of it, the grades aren't so steep that people are gonna have to walk and hike and stuff like that. Um, but that all just kind of comes down to personal preference too. But um, I think the, the race really is going to be won after driver's flat. On the downhill bit? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Just yeah. in terms of like keeping up speed or being able to run downhill? Yeah, I think the ability to run downhill after climbing for so long, I mean, it's like eight to nine miles of sustained uphill, you know, followed by 10 or 11 of sustained downhill, and then you have three miles back up into Auburn. Okay. So, yeah. Cole comes here to do a lot of his runs. There's so many trails around, but I think he usually does them on his own. So I, I think he enjoyed having someone else to run with today. Hi there. Hi. Oh, Heather. Heather. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Good to meet you. Good to see you. <laughs> yeah. How are things going? It's good. Yeah. Just checking out all Auburn has so well you're in the right place you know <laughs> yes. this is where everybody actually wants to come <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> Teresa Sudi master brewer is at the heart of Auburn's brewing community she brings a diverse array of craft beers to an equally diverse array of local mountain bikers hikers and runners the No Hands IPA, which is very cool. That is actually part of the run course yeah. this weekend and uh, Western States in June, so. Yeah, No Hands, it's such a part of this community. Everybody recognizes it, so I just love calling out to, you know, these icons around town that the, people really connect with. Yeah, totally, that's, that's awesome. Don't oh, yeah. want anyone to uh, drink alone around here, right? <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Awesome. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> I know there are more and more female brewers, but it's definitely a minority in the brewing industry. So I, for yeah. me, it's super cool just to see a female and their journey into to brewing. Yeah. it's. I mean, for me, I, I definitely had a leg up because it was our brewery, okay. but I found it to be so welcoming. I, I just want to encourage other women that are interested in getting into it. There's um, the Pink Boot Society is all about um, creating connections between women who work in the brewing industry. So that's a great place to start. So 
My brother, he has been a brewer for about 15 years, right out of college, so um, he's told me in the past, but then Teresa confirmed again today just how um, welcoming and collaborative and just friendly the whole beer culture is. Um, for me, it is really reflective of what I'm finding in the trail running culture of um, we can be competitive and race each other, but at the end of the day, it's not really about that. It's about welcoming new people to the space. I have felt so welcomed. Um, and just getting out on trails together, sharing experiences out there, sharing runs, moving our bodies, seeing nature. It's like the beer culture and trail culture really reflect each other. I think I can for probably 10, 10, minute, 10 to 12 minutes, and uh, she has notified me that they pay in beer, so uh, get to take this home this weekend. <laughs> Winning already. <laughs>It's not often you get to meet a true pioneer. Shannon Ewell Weil, co-founder of the Western States Endurance Run and champion of making Auburn the endurance capital of the world, has spent her life dedicated to having people take on things bigger than themselves. She leads by example. Well, the bridge is the first concrete bridge to be built in California. Really? In 1912, it was used to haul granite from the quarries okay. uh, over in Cool, and they hauled the granite down to Sacramento to build the streets. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Why was it called No Hands Bridge? So uh, <laughs> in the early 50s, when Wendell Roby was riding his horse in this area, he was, of course, the person that developed the Western States Trail Foundation and started the Tevis Cup ride and he would gallop his horse across the bridge. In that time, there were no rails on it, no sides, no fencing, no nothing. It was just the bridge, a uh, flat platform, and that was it. Wendell Roby's niece, Ina, and her friend, Betty Veal, loved to come out here and ride, too, okay. but they were afraid to go across the bridge. And so finally, one day, they said, let's try it. And Ina dropped her reins on her horse, threw up her hands and said, look, Ma, no hands. And so Betty Veal uh, always started calling it Ina's No Hands Bridge. Okay. So then it just became No Hands Bridge. And everybody it knows stuck. it that way. It's stuck there. Uh, 1977, I rode the Tevis Cup ride, and there were 14 runners with us. And I was so enamored by these people running along the trail that I just said, this is going to be a hit and I'm going to make sure it is. And it's like everything about that race that I, I got involved the next week and it just sort of channeled through me. I mean, I just uh, I did all the branding up for it. We uh, decided to have it a month earlier than the Tevis Cup ride in 78. Okay. So that's when we had our first solo event. Okay. And we had 64 runners. Oh my goodness, that's yeah. pretty good for the first year. Right. We were all endurance riders that, yes. that started this. It was a gang of four, which was uh, myself, Phil Gardner, Kurt Sproul, and Mo Livermore. I heard rumors that Auburn, the endurance capital of the world, may have come from yourself? Yes, it did. I coined that phrase in 1978. Okay. I told Wendell Roby after we saw a couple of years of success with the Western States Endurance Run, I said, Wendell, Auburn should be the endurance capital of the world. And he said, he was 80 at the time. And he says, oh, that's nice, honey. You know, <laughs> I'm not an ultra runner, you know, I'm not a runner. So I couldn't run it, you know, but I could shape it. I could, I could help manage it and bring it to life. Mm -hmm. So I earned the name of the Mother Superior of the race. Okay, oh, perfect. <laughs> I've gotten to meet the Mother yeah. Superior. That's, that's awesome. Look, Ma, no hands. Um, I just think that's a cool story. You hear about all the different points on the course and just the history behind them, but No Hands Bridge has had that history, that mark. I've heard of it 
as someone that's never done it, like race is falling apart around here, or this could be a part where someone might pull away, or there's so many different, I guess, various stories around No Hands Bridge that it's just cool to now see it and, and know this little section of the trail. Heather! Hey! hey. <laughs> good to see you. Yeah, good Thanks to see coming. you. Oh, yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah, welcome to Auburn. Thank you. Chaz Shea, race director for the Canyons Endurance Run by UTMB, has had a lot on his plate lately, having to redirect the race routes due to a severe winter. Yeah, so we've had to reroute the two longer to, uh, distances, and um, so that's all new maps, all new handbooks, rearranging people and all the gear. The new routes are great. The 25 and 50K are still the same. Okay. And now we get everyone finishing in Auburn and it's gonna be a really good time. Well, uh, we got lots of work to do. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm yeah. ready. Okay, <laughs> let's go. All right. All right, come on. So much good stuff in here. Oh my yeah, God. yeah. <laughs> a little bit of everything. Yep, so this is where we put um, all the different aid stations, supplies together, and food for the athletes. Okay. Uh, as you can see, we got chips, Everything. tortillas, fruit, watermelon, mm. um, all the nutrition products, peanut butter filled pretzels, yes. jelly bellies, wow. uh, vegetable broth because- One of my favorites. 2,700 tortillas. Oh my goodness. Lots of toilet paper because right? people need to, <laughs> yep. need to use the loo. And then that's just for the A stations. All our finish line stuff is, is over here. Um, and yeah, it's just, uh, it's a labor of love. Wow. You want to help me fill some water bottles? I, yes, okay. I, would. I would. All right, come on, let's all go. Right. I'm ready. <laughs> you can't run out of water, so it, it's, it's really key to stay hydrated, as you know. Yeah, right? and it's, it's hotter than I, I would have thought. Um, <laughs> so last week, or on Monday, it was like 60 degrees. Yeah. And it's supposed to be 87 on race day. Okay. Any other tips on the trail <laughs> you can share? Um, well, yeah. Don't go too fast on the downhills. You crush your quads. And if you feel yourself getting too hot, just ice, water, ice, you know, okay. get yourself, do you have a uh, bandana for ice? I do. Yep. 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 So yeah. I can't even imagine being in charge of, yeah, having to make sure everything is set to go for this weekend for both Friday and Saturday's races, stocking the aid stations, all the runners coming through over two days time and just the volunteers that are going to be out there standing in the heat as well just making it possible for the runners to complete this race ahead of them. I mean, such a massive thanks to all of the volunteers coming out for this weekend's race. Pretty good night of sleep, so I feel, feel rested, feel good. You look excited. The trails are almost this freedom. It's almost like this exploration. I get to see these brand new places I've never been. Every day on a trail is new and refreshing and, and fun and, and different. And so coming to that after 15 years of finding flat paved roads so I can hit a certain mile pace, it's just this, yeah, it's so fun to run again. It brings so much happiness because I'm just going out to run and enjoying every second of it.
about just those shared experiences and and that yeah everything regarding the community that just makes it fun and makes it memorable and makes it kind of yeah what life is about like those are the experiences you'll remember 